Hey all, my name is Zeke and today I will be updating Minecraft to version 1.2.5 and I'll be installing some mods to go with it. Now first thing I need to do is locate my Minecraft directory. You can see it's in my c colon backslash users slash username slash application data dot Minecraft. And once I've located that, I will back it all up. Once that's complete, I'll take my new minecraft.7zip file and put it somewhere safe. And then we will delete everything in our .minecraft directory. And if we happen to break anything later on, we can just restore it from our backup. Next thing we need to do is launch Minecraft. And once we log into that, it will re-download itself and you'll have a nice fresh install ready for modding. There we have it, Minecraft version 1.2.5, unmodded and ready to go. Now we need to download our mod prerequisites. First one is Minecraft Mod Loader. If you do a Google search, you should come across Rizugami's mods on the Minecraft forum. We scroll down the page a little bit and you'll find Mod Loader 1.2.5. Uh, you can download that one, I've already got it. Now I've got it again. And then we look for Minecraft Forge. Now, Minecraft Forge used to be located on the Minecraft forum. It then moved to the mod-buildcraft.com forums. And once again, it has moved. It is now at minecraftforge.net forums. So once we've got the minecraftforge.net forums, we go to the release forum, want the main forge download topic, and the recommended link. That'll open up this page, or one similar to it. This is build number 105 as of the 2nd of May, and the version number is 3.1.3.105. When you're looking at mods and they tell you what version of Forge they need, this is the number that you need to look at. So I download that one. Once again, I've already got it, so I don't need to download it again. And once you've got both of those, it's time to mod our Minecraft. So we find our Minecraft jar, which is in the .minecraft slash bin directory. I always copy and paste to make a backup of it. And then we open that with 7-zip. We then need to locate the download location of Mod Loader and Minecraft Forge. And we open those, starting with Mod Loader. Select all and drag into the Minecraft jar. When that one's done, do the same with Minecraft Forge. Select all, drag into the jar. And now we're done with those two files. Now, if you happen to run Minecraft now, like a lot of people seem to do, it will not work, as I will demonstrate. You will either see this updating Minecraft screen done loading forever, or you'll just get a black screen afterwards. To fix that, we delete the meta inf folder from our jar file. You can do that before launching Minecraft, which is usually preferable. So we launch it again. And there we have it, Minecraft 1.2.5 ready for mods. If we go back to our .minecraft directory, you'll see we now have a mods directory created and a modloader.txt. Alright, so now to actually installing mods. This is the easy part. First we're going to install Industrial Craft. Industrial Craft has its own website, Industrial Craft Wiki. And over on the right side here you'll see latest updates. IC2 version 1.9.5b is the current one. And you click download now. Now it will take you to the download page. And we want the client version, which I have already downloaded. So we've got it downloaded here. We'll open our mod directory and drop it in. Now just to be sure it worked. We create a new world, stick it on creative.
I'm in a tree. And you see here we have some industrial craft items. So that was successfully installed. Alright, next one we want to install would be Red Power. Minecraft Red Power. Now we do a Google search for Minecraft Red Power and you locate this link, Red Power and Minia Development. And we see here Red Power 2 release 5B1 for Minecraft 1.2.5. Has a bit of uh, release notes there. We want to go to the download link up here. And you can select from the single player slash client files which ones you want to download. You have to download the Red Power Core. As you can see, all of these require it. If you want to use machine and control, then you need to download world and wiring. If you don't want to use those, you don't need world and you don't need wiring. But I recommend downloading them all anyway. Have the complete experience. Now, again, I have already downloaded that, as you can see here. And once again, it's a simple matter of moving them to your mods directory. Now, normally, I would open up Minecraft now and test that straight away to make sure it works, but we're just going to go straight to Buildcraft. From the Buildcraft webpage, you see we have two different versions, 2.2.14 and 3.1.5. 3.1.5 is still in alpha at this stage. It does contain a lot more than Buildcraft 2.2.14 does, so that's what we're going to be downloading. You see down here we have Buildcraft 3.1.5 for Minecraft, 1.2.5, so we click that link. As you can see I've already downloaded all of these. Again you just download which ones you want. You have to have the core for any of the others to work. Again I recommend downloading all of them as I have done here. These are actually the wrong ones. As you can see I have them downloaded here. So once again we just move those into our mods directory. At this stage I will test it. So we launch our Minecraft again. And there we go. Nothing wrong so far, so we open our creative world. And we check our inventory. This is all red power here, so that's worked fine. And this is buildcraft here, so once again that's worked fine. And we scroll down a little further, we see we have some more red power. We have some more buildcraft. And we have some more industrial craft. So that's worked well so far. Now we'll install a few other mods. Some of the ones that I prefer are Somnia, Ray's Minimap. This status effect HUD is quite nice. And we'll throw Tree Capitator, Swords Plus, and Better Than Testificates. All of these ones can just be dumped straight in there. We run Minecraft again to see if anything broke. It seems the more mods I install, the longer this takes. Right there you see something has broken. So if you ever see this screen, you scroll down a little bit, you'll see Begin Error Report. A little bit of information about your system and right here is where the actual error is. We see that a slot is already occupied by a block when trying to add some build craft things. So to fix that we need to locate the configuration file. Now I know that that particular block comes from Swords Plus and it said block 145 is currently in use. There it is. Let's change that to something else. Then we run it again. Again, we've got the same error screen, but if we scroll down, you see it's now block 146. So we go back into our config file, and we find 146, which is there. Let me try it again. And 
quite often when you install a, a lot of different mods you'll come across these block ID slots already taken. One thing that I do is I like to keep track of all the block IDs that I change when I update to a new version. And that way, when I get these block conflict errors, I know what it was working with in the last version that I had, so I can just update this one to be the same. Now we see here a different error. Block 138 is one that I've just chosen, but this one is in use by Red Power and Swords Plus. And you can see this extra little bit at the end, Auto Assign is disabled. Now, if we go into the Red Power configuration, which is in its own separate directory, we scroll right to the bottom, we'll see here Auto Assign equals zero. If we change that to one, Red Power will automatically reassign its own block IDs, so it will automatically resolve any conflicts for us. And when you launch Minecraft again, that auto assign will be reassigned back to zero. So if you install any other mods later, you may need to change it again. There we go. We have gotten back into Minecraft. Now we just make sure a few of our mods have worked. Now, swords Plus adds some swords, as can be told by its name. And here they are. And it's got a few bows and some gems and a couple of blocks. These are the ones that were causing problems with the block ID conflicts. Uh, we have also installed Tree Capitator, so let's find me a vanilla axe. That will do. Make sure that one worked. We'll cut down this tree. Yep, that worked fine. Now we need a bed. We'll test out Somnia. Yep, Somnia worked. Now, better than testificates is hard to test because we need to go and find some mobs and mobs haven't spawned yet. And we can see that Ray's minimap has worked. It's up in the corner. And the last one to test is the status effect HUD. The easiest way to test that is to find something that changes our status. Golden apple. Can we eat that? No, we can't. Alright, since we can't eat food, I guess we have to make a potion. I'll do that real quick. There we go, potion of fire resistance. And there we have it. Our status HUD is now on our main screen as per the status HUD mod. So that will work so far. Next one I'm going to install is the ender storage, which requires the code chicken core. So if we have a look, quiddity modding is where we need to go to find this. Ender storage. Now, it depends on the code chicken core, which is in a different thread, so we open that one. And we want the ender storage version 1.1.1, or whatever it is at the time that you're watching this video. So you click, you download that. And we need chicken bones mods. We need to find the code chicken core, this one. And we download the latest client here. Uh, again, I've already downloaded those, as you can see. And these just get dropped straight into your mods directory as well. Yep, run Minecraft just to make sure that didn't break anything. Alright, there we go. If it does come up with any block ID conflicts, you can just go into the configuration files and change them until it doesn't. Alright, we'll go into our world and make sure it has successfully installed properly. Oh, look, I'm still resistant to fire. Oh. This ender chest mod, or ender storage mod, adds two items. One of them is an ender chest, one of them is an ender pouch. And from what I recall, the ender chest does not actually show up, but the ender pouch does. I don't know if the ender chest actually works, so I'm going to try and craft one. There it is. 
and the chest is installed. Alright, the last one I'm going to install today is Better Dungeons. And when that one's downloaded, it's in a zip file. You open up the zip file, it has this big copy contents to your Minecraft and readme text. Readme, here's a bunch of changes over time. Here's install instructions, don't really need that. You open that and do as it says. Copy that to your Minecraft directory. Yes, we'll overwrite the mods simply because this only contains a better dungeon zip and we didn't have that already. Alright, and hopefully for the final time we launch Minecraft. As far as I'm aware, the Better Dungeons mod does not add blocks, so there should not be any conflicts. We open up our world, and to make sure it's worked, we fly around until it generates one. And there we have it. New dungeon generated. And that's about everything for installing mods in Minecraft 1.2.5. Well, always remember to read the installation instructions and the prerequisite instructions for any mod that you want to install. And I hope the rest of this video helped. Thank you for watching.